Welcome. We are going to look at the process of diffusion, basing our discussion on a Form 1 topic in biology. Objectives of the lesson. We expect that by the end of this lesson, the learner should be able to describe the process of diffusion and should also be in a position to discuss diffusion in living organisms. Often, we have smell nectar from flowers and uh, in most of occasion, we have also smell perfume from either sprayed perfume bottle or individuals who have perfume from their body. How does perfume smell spread? Can you explain the process of the spread of the smell using diffusion? Let's go back to our discussion and describe the diffusion process. Observe the illustration uh, below and note your observation at the end. What are you able to see when the color material is put in water inside the beaker? What happens? As we are able to observe, the entire water within the beaker becomes yellow. Mm -hmm. We can conclude that the color drops particles have actually spread throughout the water within the beaker. From this experiment, we can define diffusion as the net movement of particles or ions or molecules from an area where they are at higher concentration to areas where they are at lower concentration. There are many definitions you can come across, but as a student, it's better to note that the particles will move from a region where they are highly concentrated to a region where they are lowly concentrated. Mastering of this concept will enable you to give other definitions from different perspectives. Okay, why would the particles move from one region to the other? Which explanation can we give for the movement of particles or ions from one area and spreading to the other? Particles possess kinetic energy. And due to this energy, they randomly move and bombard against each other. This movement results in the process of diffusion. Just as you have explained earlier, the process of diffusion will occur when the particles will migrate from where they are highly concentrated to other regions where they are lowly concentrated. So aided by the kinetic energy possessed by the particles, which brings about the movement and collision of the particles, the direction of movement will follow the concentration gradient, as we have explained earlier. Let's look at diffusion in living organisms. There are two structures here that are going to help us explain diffusion in plants and alveoli, which is in animals. 
Now, diffusion is a very important process. In plants, it brings about gaseous exchange. Looking at this diagram of the inner structure of a leaf, we are able to observe carbon-4 oxide coming in into the spongy mesophyll through the stoma. At the same time, we are able to observe oxygen from internal structure of the leaf coming out through the stoma. How is that possible? Within the atmosphere, there is high concentration of carbon-4 oxide, while inside the leaf structures, there is low concentration of carbon-4 oxide. This is due to the fact that carbon-4 oxide is consumed by the plant in the process of photosynthesis. Now, a deficiency is created and a concentration gradient results. So we end up having a high concentration of carbon-4 oxide outside the leaf and a lower concentration of carbon-4 oxide inside. <coughs> Thus, carbon-4 oxide will diffuse from the atmosphere into the leaf through the process of diffusion. The same can be explained for oxygen. Now, let's look at the alveoli in animals. Alveoli is a very important structure that is found within the lungs. Actually, it is the basic functional unit of the lungs. When we breathe in fresh air, that is oxygen, it moves into the lungs and within the lungs it moves to the structures that we refer to as alveoli. Blood from the tissues blood from the tissues within the body move to the lungs where they are purified. What do you mean by purification? Carbon-4 oxide is removed at the lungs and at the same time oxygen diffuses into the blood. So which process is this? The blood that comes from the body organs, from the tissues, has a deficiency of oxygen because oxygen has been consumed and used within the tissues. As we breathe in, there is higher concentration of oxygen within the alveolar. Now, the difference in concentration arises. Oxygen, which is highly concentrated in the alveoli, will diffuse into the bloodstream where we have low concentration of oxygen, hence the process of diffusion. Likewise, when the blood flows within the tissues, it carries with it carbon-4 oxide. So by the time the blood is within the lungs, it has high concentration of carbon-4 oxide compared to within the alveoli. Now, what happens? Carbon-4 oxide diffuses from the blood, uh, from the bloodstream into the alveoli, and the process is completed when we breathe out carbon-4 oxide. Now, we have learned about application of diffusion in living organisms. We have given two examples to illustrate the same. Take note of this and give other further examples for the same and post your questions on the chat below so that we can discuss them next time. Goodbye.